When we take a look at serial asynchronous communications, typically you have a transmitter connected to a receiver on the PC screen. On the keyboard you have a transmitter connected to a receiver. So transmitter to receiver, transmitter to receiver, that's the way you typically set up communications on an asynchronous system. Serial synchronous communications are different than serial asynchronous communications. If we have a microcontroller sitting here, and another microcontroller sitting here and this is our serial peripheral interface for one of them and the serial peripheral interface for the other one. One of them will have to be a master and the other one will have to be a slave. Now notice what we have, we have four pins here on both. This is called master out, slave in, master in, slave out, and serial clock and slave select line. It's a very simple way to connect these, master out, slave in, to master out, slave in, master in, slave out, to master in, slave out, and serial clock to serial clock, and slave select to the slave select of the other one. It's a very simple four wire connection. Now what you're going to find is the master controls everything, and if a bitstream gets sent out on the master out, slave in, to the master out, slave in of the slave, you've got eight bits being transferred here, but at the very same time, the master in, slave out, will also send back 8 bits to the master in slave out here. So it's like a conveyor belt. You send something, you receive something back. So far as you will recall, we have our bus out pins here through our resistor pack driving our 7 segment display. What we've added to this is we've added our 75HC595 here. And if you look at the schematic for that particular chip, which is a serial to parallel shift register, you'll find that pin 16 is 3.3 volts and pin 8 is ground. Now the way you orient the chip is you can figure out where pin 1 is by this notch. This is pin 1 through 8. This is pin 9 through 16. As we saw before, our bus out pins that we had here used up way too many of our available I.O. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our bus out pins that we had here and connect them to the Q0 through Q7 pins of our serial to parallel shift register. And once we've done that, we're going to connect up the master out slave in to DS, and DS is our serial data input. We're going to connect our serial clock to SHCP, which is our shift register clock input. We're going to connect our slave select to STCP which is our storage register clock input. So altogether we're going to have three connections coming into here from our SPI. Now you can see that that is MOSI is D11, MISO is D12, and serial clock is D13, and our slave select is actually an arbitrary pin and we've selected D10 over here to be that pin. So these are the connections that we're going to make. Now how this works is we're going to shift out 8 bits into our 8 stage shift register and they're going to be synchronized with the clock signal coming in here. So all 8 bits are going to be shifted in in a clock manner. And then what we're going to find is that our slave select here is going to start off at 0 and when we flip it from 0 to 1 these 8 bits that we've shifted in here will float down and drive our seven segment display inputs. To finish our connections we have to make sure our master reset which is pin 10 which is low enabled is connected to 3.3 volts. If this pin is allowed to drop to ground it will mess everything up in terms of our shifting. Also we have to have our output enabled which is pin 13 connected to ground. In that way anything that makes it to our 8-bit storage register will flow through the three state outputs and directly to our seven segment displays. By using our SPI here and one serial to parallel shift register, we have three pins here instead of eight pins that we had on our bus out. But the real benefit of the SPI is to have multiple devices connected. And what we're going to find is if we wanted, say, four seven segment displays, we would then need only to put in three more serial to parallel shift registers here and the same three lines here is all that you would need from our header to drive all four seven segment displays. 
Now how does that work? Well, if we want four seven second displays, everything we shift in here, once we shift in eight bits, when we shift our next eight bits, those bits go out on this pin here, which means it's very easy to connect this guy, pin nine, to pin 14 to shift into the next serial of parallel shift register and so on. So 9 to 14, 9 to 14, 9 to 14. So whatever we shift in here will continually shift across. Now the other thing is that what we want to do is we want the clocking to be uh, the same. So we'd have to connect this pin 11 to the next pin 11 to the next pin 11 to the next pin 11. That's fine. And we'd also have to connect this pin 12 to the next pin 12 to the next pin 12 and so on. And how would this work? Well, we'd shift a total of 32 bits into here, which would go all across all of our four shift registers. And then we would set this from low to high. And at that point, all of these 477 displays would be updated. And again, 477 displays would only require these three connectors on our Arduino header. So that is the real power of using SPI.